Fairness Creatives presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, my dear friends. I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more experience as we consider the mountain of God in the book of Exodus. The chapter is three, and we shall consider verses one and go up to verse four. Before we delve into the word of God, a moment of prayer. As we experience this mountain top for this week, let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, and thank you, dear Lord, for visiting us and calling unto us through your angel. And I pray, dear Lord, that we may answer, "Yes, Lord, call us by name and talk to us. Reveal unto us the truth that you have set for us for this week. If it means." Humbling us, let your will be done, so that we may meet you on the mountain top. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask, Amen and Amen. Come with me to the book of Exodus, and we are reading from verse one. It reads as follows: Meanwhile, Moses was shepherding the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire within a bush. As Moses looked, he saw that the bush was on fire, but was not consumed. So Moses thought, "I must go over and look at this remarkable sight. Why isn't the bush burning up?" When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from the bush, Moses, Moses, here am I. Here I am. He answered. May the good Lord bless the reading of His word. Amen. Amen. Now let us just raise five points for the week. And at point number one, as we begin the book of Exodus, we meet Moses as a shepherd. He is taking care of the sheep. If you have not read the preceding chapters, you may find nothing out of the ordinary with this account. But this is not a shepherd boy. Moses is the Moses. I mean, the prince of Egypt. Moses is the Moses. I mean, the Moses who used to send them and they would go. Moses who used to give an account. To the king on the assets of the kingdom, he didn't have to count the sheep himself. Somebody had to count and give him the record so that he could account to the king of Egypt. But Moses now finds himself taking care of sheep. How are the mighty fallen? This could have been a fitting topic for our discourse this morning. But Moses' humiliation and fall from grace. Is for a good reason, and this brings us to point number one. Everything happens for a reason. Some of us, as we're going into this week, may find themselves demoted. Some of us may find ourselves retrenched. Some of us may find ourselves as fugitives from the law. Why? I do not know. But this much I know: God has a reason. Most probably, He wants to have an audience with you. God wants to spend time. Talking with you, and he says, "My son, as long as you remain where you are, I might not get an opportunity to talk to you. My daughter, as long as you remain where you are, I might not have an audience with you. Take time to appreciate that everything happens for a reason." This brings us to point number two. Notice that when Moses now goes over, the Bible says he led the flock. To the far side of the wilderness, and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The mountain of God will never come to us, just like the ram that we discussed last week. It never comes to us. We need to come to the mountain of God. We need to come to the ram. We need to draw closer to God. Many a time we have read, and we expect God to always come to us, but God creates an enabling environment. So that when the time is come, we may draw nigh unto Him. All along, 
God is drawing us to him and he has been doing a good job of drawing us. And some of us, as he draws us close, we do not want to go close enough. What shall it take for us to move closer to the mountain? What shall it take for us to even recognize the presence of God? And this brings us to point number three. I promised you last week that there is an angel who swears by himself. Gabriel does not swear by himself. And at point number three, notice this. An angel of the Lord appeared in the flames. In the flames. And why does he appear in the flames? So that he could attract Moses this angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham and he spoke by voice from heaven, speaking to Abraham on earth. But now as he appears to Moses, he appears through the flame. What am I saying to you this morning? God will not always appear to you the way he has appeared to others. God will not always minister unto you the way he has ministered unto others. You cannot afford to go through life your Christian walk with the copy and paste control V kind of attitude. There is no way God will always be the same. God is unique and different to every one of us. Expect God to meet you this week. Expect God to be new to you. He will not come to you the way he did yesterday. He will not come to you the way he did last month or the year before. He is always new. His blessings are new every morning. And God appears to Moses in a flame. Point number four. Not only does he appear to him in a flame. Why the flame? So that he can cause curiosity in Moses. So that he can raise his attractiveness and attention. The word of God must make us curious at the end of the day. The word of God must make us long to draw nigh unto it. The word of God must give us a longing and a desire to come closer to him. If, and I repeat, if you do not find the word of God to be attractive, it does not mean it has changed. It does not mean it has lost its power. It does not mean it has lost its fire. The word of the Lord remains the same. It is attractive. It is life-giving. It has always been there. It will always be there. Should you find it not attractive anymore, ask yourself, what is happening to me? What is happening to me? This must be a cause for concern. Find no comfort in being indifferent to the word of God. Find no comfort in being the same when you meet with the Lord. Let this cause a difference in you and a difference in me. At point number five, as we climax, as Moses is there, God is observing. The good book says, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God always sees and he shall be seeing us as we go into this week. And God saw Moses and God is seeing you. God is seeing me. And thereafter, God calls twice. Moses, Moses. And he answers, here I am. The good question is, who is ready to answer, here I am, O Lord? Who is ready to say, Lord, I hear your voice softly and tenderly speaking. You are calling me. God, you recognize me. God, you know me by name as God calls out to you this morning. Are you ready to answer and say, here I am, O Lord? I am ready to follow you. Here am I, O oh Lord. I am ready to reach the mountaintop. Here am I, O oh Lord. I am curious and longing to learn more about you. Here am I, O oh Lord. If it means I need to step down in order to meet you, may your will be done. Here I am, O oh Lord, as I walk into this week. These are the five points I leave with you. Some of us may face humiliation. Some of us may face downgrading. Some of us may face loss of standing and status. May your will be done. Lord, if it means that is how I'm going to meet you, may your will be done. And while you're at it, the mountain will not come to you. These mountains will not come to you. You have to go to the mountaintop to experience the mountaintop experience. Only at the mountaintop can you experience the mountaintop experience and hear the Lord 
speak to you. For he is an angel, for he is our father. He calls out unto us and he says, Moses, Moses, may he call you by your name. May you answer in the affirmative. May you enjoy your experience throughout this week. Blessings and peace. See you on Friday. Good day.